Hello, I'm Dr. Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist who's specialized in psychopharmacology for close to 40 years, and in the last almost 10 years have been doing TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. I went to Georgetown Medical School and Columbia for psychiatry, and I want to talk today about probiotics for depression. And uh, these are important. They call them probiotics. Pro means in favor of, and biotics means something biological. But what they are is different forms of bacteria that we are trying to seed our intestine to improve the number of good bacteria in our intestine than uh, negative bacteria. <coughs> our uh, GI tract has been very diverse as long as humans have been around. We have maybe 100 trillion bacteria in our gut, and there are 300 to 1,000 different species, but there are also uh, different varieties within these species, and there's also various viruses. And since we've coexisted with these bacteria for so long, we have made use of them, and some of them uh, embed themselves in the wall of the colon, and we have regulated our immune system to some degree with these, including uh, our ability to avoid autoimmune disorders. Uh, things uh, have changed over the years, and now we do not have as much biodiversity in the intestine. I'll give you one good example to begin with. The Amish people from Pennsylvania and other areas have much less asthma in the children than do the Mennonites. And these people are very similar people from similar places in Europe, and, and uh, their original language is German, and they read the Bible in German. The difference is that the Amish uh, do not use any modern uh, uh, tractors or anything else for their farming. They do everything with uh, horses, and, and when they travel, they travel in buggies. The Mennonites have accepted cars and they've used tractors and this is really the only difference. So the scientists went around and studied these people and they found that there was a lot more diversity in the bacteria in the intestines in the Amish. And this is because the driveway going up to the house and the barn is dirt and they've got horses around as well as other animals and they defecate around and the car comes in and the dust comes up and there's bacteria in the air. And then the Mennonites have a much more cleanly area with a <laughs> paved driveway and then they have a tractor coming up and they don't have horses around and so on. And <clears throat> the manure and uh, the dust and everything of the farms of the Amish ultimately give the, uh, the children much higher gut diversity just from breathing in a few of these bacteria or getting them on your mouth and, um, and then them getting down into your gastrointestinal tract. And that seems to be the reason. <clears throat> now, things have changed dramatically uh, overall over a few thousand years. The microbiologists that study this call certain bacteria old friends. And these are bacteria that we used to have in high proportions and now humans have very little of them. Some of them came from stagnant water. Huge amounts are in stagnant water. And if you think about hunter-gatherers, uh, which we were for a very long time, then you may get some of your water from drinking water from stagnant water. You can't always be near a river. 
You're going to walk through that water, at least, and then some of it will get on your hand and then you'll rub your mouth and, and it, it will get into you. And we were hunter-gatherers, if you say humans started out uh, 2.5 million years ago when the brain suddenly got bigger, and then we've been doing farming for 10,000 years, that means in four hours of being humans, we've been farmers for only one second. And then the diet has changed even more rapidly in the last thousand years, which is one-tenth of one second. Our genes are that of a hunter-gatherer. The hunter-gatherers have a really diverse GI bacteria. One fellow who studied the Hadja in uh, Kenya, a very famous tribe that is still only hunting and gathering. About over 50% of their intake is from plants, berries, and tubers that they dig deep from the ground. And, uh, and then almost 50% is, is uh, meat that they kill from poisoned arrows. He uh, described once that they came across a uh, antelope that uh, some wild dogs had killed. So they scared off the wild dogs and they took the antelope to eat. And, uh, and when they cut it up, they were covered with blood. So to wash off the blood, they cut open one of the stomachs of the ruminant and took out this mass of uh, almost digested grass, which was really messy, and then they used that to clean their hands of the blood. And he says they're getting a vast amount of different types of bacteria when they're doing that. You know, and they're inevitably going to rub their mouth or something, and some of that bacteria is going to get into them. Then, later on, they, uh, they're cutting up the animal, and they uh, cut up the intestine and cut it in strips like sushi to eat raw. And actually, they didn't eat it quite raw. They, they'd cut it up and then throw it on the fire a little bit and singe it so it was partially cooked. And then they'd eat the slices. Now, he didn't eat it <laughs> because this uh, colon, this is the intestine, they didn't wash it with water or anything else. So it was still full of bacteria, even though maybe the feces was pushed aside and out, full of bacteria that are found in this particular animal. And they would eat these. So they have very high uh, variety of uh, bacteria, and we are low. The way to get around this is to change your diet somewhat and also just to take probiotic pills. And this has been shown to help depression. And in one study by a Norwegian lady, I think that with using probiotics in people that were prone to have another depression, she reduced their risk of depression by 50 percent. Uh, the, uh, there's something else called a prebiotic, and I'll mention that first and then go to probiotics. But prebiotics are foods that promote the growth of bacteria and hopefully of the good bacteria. And one of the most common sources is yogurt, especially yogurt that's closer to being homemade. And that kefir yogurt, K-E-F-I-R, is particularly good. And when you buy yogurt, buy ones that say with acidophilus, because that's the main type of bacteria that it provides. Other foods that are extremely good for promoting bacteria are miso, like a miso soup, um, <clears throat> fruit that's a little bit fermented. Um, that's how hunter-gatherers get a lot of their good bacteria is from fermented fruit, because just because it's getting overripe, you're not going to just throw it away. Sauerkraut. Uh, spirulina, chlorella, 
dark chocolate, green pickles, kombucha, tempeh, T-E-M-P-E-H. This is made from whole soya beans and they're partially cooked and mashed and then fermented with mold. Another one is kimchi. This is a, um, uh, a dish in Korea that's made from cabbage and is very spicy and many people think it smells really bad, period. I had a, uh, sorry, I said period, I'm so used to dictating. Uh, I had a girlfriend whose real name was Kim Chi. She was Vietnamese. And uh, she changed it to Chi Chi because she didn't want to be called this name of this odd sounding, funny smelling food. Aged cheese is another probiotic, olives, sourdough bread, beer, natto, N-A-T-T-O. This is a, a stringy fermented soya bean that the Japanese use for a breakfast food. Fermented foods in general tend to be probiotic. So eating more of these is healthy. Uh, now, with the probiotics, a major problem is that half of them that are sold over the counter don't have any active probiotic left. They dried out or something since they were produced in the factory. So if you buy two of them and, uh, and alternate them, you still only have uh, a 25% chance, you have a 25% chance that you're taking nothing. So I think it's better to buy four different brands and mix them all in a bowl and then just arbitrarily take out two a day and you're likely to be taking something that's active. A better way to uh, obtain active probiotic is to ask the pharmacist to uh, order it if he, he or she doesn't have it. What the pharmacist obtain is put in the refrigerator immediately and when you take it home you put it in the refrigerator and the the uh, the probiotic is much more likely to be live. One of the common ones that they have is is VSL3 but uh, he or she will know what to obtain and I've also read that if you order the probiotic on the internet you're more likely to get adequate live bacteria because it'll be fresher and then when you receive it you should probably keep it in the refrigerator. Now there's something called a postbiotic and this means afterlife that it's, it, it's really the chemicals that the bacteria make and these aren't sold quite as much but they are available um, and by the way penicillin the fungus uh, that makes penicillin, the penicillin is a, is a postbiotic. It's something that the bacteria made. And vitamin K and B vitamins and biotin, these are examples of molecules that are, that are postbiotics. Generally, we get B12 from uh, meat but I've read that uh, when you have carrots or tubers from the ground, if you don't wash them completely, the dirt, bacteria that are clinging to the little roots of the carrot has a lot of B12 in it. But nowadays we clean that all completely. In any case, the probiotics are good for our health and they're sometimes very helpful for for uh, depression and usually I'm adding them in with everything else so it's difficult to, to establish whether they're really helping but they're certainly not hurting and there are no side effects and it is probably good for other aspects of, uh, of our health including things like irritable bowel syndrome. This is Robert D. McMullen. I've just given a short talk on probiotics.